Lithics Technology, Uses, and Analysis by Michael Padilla. We're going to look at what methods archaeologists use to examine lithics to determine what time they originated from. We will do this by learning about lithics, the technology used to create lithics, the tools that are created, and the uses of lithics. We're going to look at analyzing lithics through observation, evaluation, and recovery, discuss the sedentary layer, and radiocarbon dating. And then in conclusion, we'll discuss the impact on archaeology that radiocarbon dating has had. Lithics are tools manufactured from stone that have a use to the maker, so there are many different uses. Uh, examples of stone tools are projectile points, also known as arrowhead and clovis head, scrapers, blades, axes, just to name a few. The materials used to create stone tools are obsidian, basalt, dacite, and shirt, just to name a few. And you can see some examples over to the right of those materials. Lithic tools are manufactured from stone using flint napping technology. Around 110,000 to 90,000 BP, uh, controlled thermal alteration will normally apply to microcrystalline silicas materials. It began in the middle Paleolithic and was widespread around the world, but in most areas it became obsolete in the early Bronze Age. Uh, the technology flint napping is striking the, uh, striking the core of a stone, creating flakes or blades, shaping the core and flakes into tools. A core is a stone from which flakes were flaked off, and flakes are the thin pieces of stone broken from the core. Blades are longer, narrow, sharp pieces of stone broken from the core. Uh, the uses for uh, lithics are projectile points, which we discussed before, arrowheads, and uh, clovis points. <clears throat> These are primary, primarily used for hunting and protection. Scrapers are used to scrape hides off animals and can be used for cutting. Blades are used for cutting and axes are used for cutting wood. The thing that ties all these tools together is nourishment. We see the use of projectile points to kill the prey. Scrapers to take the hide off. Blades for cutting the meat. And then the axes are used for cutting wood to cook the meat. In the early 1960s, Mary and Louis Leakey uncovered 1.8 million year old stone tools at the site of Alduva Gorge in Tanzania. This was a significant discovery because relative to older hominin species that were not thought to be tool users. Archaeologists analyze lithics through observation, evaluation, and recovery. Uh, archaeologists walk the field, and here in the southwest, there are many places you can just walk and find lithics laying directly on the ground. Uh, the common lithic found are arrowheads, and remember there are laws in regards to uh, picking up lithics. You cannot pick them up and take them home with you. Uh, evaluation. Uh, it's determined, a pit may be dug to determine whether or not further excavation is needed. And then recovery, if it is determined that uh, the, this is a site for excavation, then the excavation begins. The important part is the documentation. Documenting what we see, archaeologists do this in field notes. One of the most significant developments in archaeology that had a major impact on lithic analysis was the replication of stone tools, uh, stone tool forms by craftsmen such as Francois Bordes and Don Crabtree in the 1950s and the 1960s. This opened the door to further lithic analysis by archaeologists and it sparked a new interest. Today, we continue to use the observation and evaluation recovery method, and the important part of that is the excavation of the site, exposing the sedentary layers, and then dating the lithics by the sedentary layer. This is done using radiocarbon dating. There 
are other methods of analyzing lithics, at, such as energy dispersive x-ray, uh, fluorescein and laser ablation inductivity, coupled pla plasma mass spectrometry. But we are going to focus on the radiocarbon dating as that is the most common method used by archaeologists. But how are lithics dated in the middle and upper Pliocene period? There is a suite of radiometric methods and paleomagnetics are currently employed for dating the sites that are geologically attributed to the lower through upper Pliocene. Common techniques, common techniques include thermal luminescence, electron spin resonance, and optical stimulated luminescence. How are lithics dated back six, up to 6,000 years? Now the 60,000 years is the limit of radiocarbon dating and archaeologists use the stratigraphy, the study of sedentary layers to date lithics. Each layer is analyzed for organic materials. The organic materials are used to date each layer. Lithics are dated according to the organic material in each layer. An excavation at 13HA385 produced a total of 1,589 lithic artifacts associated with the late archaic component and 6,445 lithic artifacts associated with the middle archaic period. I put this on there to put it into perspective. It can be quite a daunting task, and the excavations can be quite intense. Radiocarbon dating can be also known as carbon-14 dating. But how does radiocarbon dating work? Radiocarbon is produced in the upper atmosphere. Radiocarbon is then taken in by plants through photosynthesis. These plants are eaten by humans and animals are eaten, excuse me, plants are eaten by animals, and animals are eaten by humans. In animal and human remains, the radiocarbon decreases, it's called decay, and the half-life. The half-life is approximately 5,700 years. So for each half-life, it's an additional 5,700 years. Again, as I said earlier, there is a limitation of 60,000 years, and I want to remind you that rocks cannot be radiocarbon dated. Lithics are dated using organic material found in the sedimentary layers. What type of material can be radiocarbon dated? Now, it is organic material, and that includes bones, plants, seeds, pollen, seashells, water, charcoal, wood, leather, and hair. Charcoal was a very common uh, material that was used for radiocarbon dating. So in summary, we discussed lithics technology, the technology used to create stone tools, what tools are created, and the uses. We discussed analyzing lithics through observation, evaluation, recovery, but most importantly, we discussed uh, dating through the sedentary layer and radiocarbon dating. In the past, we only relied on observation, evaluation, and recovery. Today, there are new technologies being created that can be used to date lithics. However, archaeologists use stratigraphy and radiocarbon dating as a primary tool for dating lithics. Radiocarbon dating, the materials in sedentary layers, is the cheapest and requires a small amount of material to be analyzed. Radiocarbon dating has had one of the biggest impacts on archaeology. It has provided archaeologists with an inexpensive method to date lithics. Thank you, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and I will respond.